sodium silicate. It's used uh, to seal concrete, it's used as an adhesive. Uh, we're going to use it in pottery today. It gives a nice texture to uh, the surface of your pottery. Uh, I like to uh, add uh, stains and I like to add uh, oxides to it sometimes. Uh, you can add glaze to it if you want. That'll work just as well. Uh, I'll use a blender to mix it up. I take a small jar, a small mason jar, throw a little sodium silicate in it, a little bit of uh, whatever I'm putting in it. In this, in this case, it is stain. And uh, we'll put it on the blender and give it a little spin. You see it kind of mixes it up in the jar pretty good. Uh, some blenders will do this, some won't. Uh, when you're mixing this stuff up, when you're making it, don't, uh, don't mix up big batches. Uh, they'll go bad before you use all of it. So just a, just a little bit, okay? Take the lid off. Oh, there we go. Now, whenever you mix this stuff up, or glazes, or any of this kind of stuff, a nice little trick is to take a piece of saran wrap, or plastic wrap, put it over the top of the jar, and put it between the jar and the lid. And this makes the lid a lot easier to get off. Uh, sometimes lids will, get, lids will get stuck to it, you know? Well, this, this kind of fixes that. Now let's go to the Wedge-O-Matic. I'm gonna throw, uh, I'm gonna throw about three or four pounds of clay on there. Get it uh, mixed up. Uh, this has already been through the pug mill, so this wedging is, you don't have to do a whole lot after the pug mill. I also, you know, kind of do some wheel wedging too, so by the time it's done, it's there's no air bubbles. I'll uh, take care of that rough part on the bottom, put that on the top, wrap it around the side like this a couple times. Voila, lump of clay. Put that to the wheel. Add a little water to it to start the process. Now we're gonna center this. Uh, recently I had a shoulder replacement. I'm about six weeks out from a shoulder replacement. Uh, so I shouldn't be doing this anyway because I don't have the strength and it's been a while. But uh, you know, you, you do what you want to do. Now we'll center this up. There's my wheel wedging. Clean up the bat a little bit. Yeah, we'll open this up. This may not be the best vase I've, I've done. Like I said before, I had shoulder surgery, so it might be a little wonky, but that's okay. Wonky's good sometimes. See what we can do here. Clean up the outside. Uh, I'm going to try and straighten these walls out a little bit. Make sure they're even inside and out. Uh, you got a metal rib on the inside, metal rib on the outside. Clean it up. That rib on the inside is a new tool for me. I kind of like it. Piece of metal. Now we're going to get some of this wonkiness out of it. Get that wobble going. Bring it in. Not too worried about the lip right now. Just trying to get that, uh, get her straighter. Get her straighter? Get her done. No, get her straighter. There we go. Now we'll uh, cut the lip off. Straighten that up a little bit. Now I want to clean off the outside of this vase or cylinder. It's not a vase yet. Sodium silicate likes to stick to drier clay. If the clay is too wet, it has a tendency to run a lot more. Still didn't like it. There we go. Now we'll clean her off. Now, sodium silicate. Uh, this first one is yellow iron oxide. Uh, it burns to a deep red 
almost. It's like a ox blood. Uh, I'm putting it on in a random pattern. Uh, I'm going to coat the entire outside of this vase, but I'm going to do it with different colors. Uh, you can also leave spaces that have no, you know, sodium on it at all, and it gives it a neat kind of pattern also. But I'm doing it this way. And I'm using the uh, cheap chip brushes. Um, they're disposable. You can reuse them a couple times, but if they get bad, you can throw it away. Um, these brushes are, I get like a bunch of them for a couple bucks. And um, sodium silicate can wreck your tools if you aren't careful. So now I add a little red to it. Uh, there again, I'm filling in all the little holes, so I've got colors going over colors. It'll be kind of cool when you're done. Now I'm taking a torch and I'm drying the outside surface. Now it's up to you how much you want to dry it. If you dry it, you know, pretty deep, you'll get deep cracks. If you dry it just the surface, you'll get surface cracks. I want just surface cracks. So I'll, I'll watch it. It's still a little wet. We'll go a little more. There we go. There we are. Let's see. Oh, nice and dry. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to belly it out. Um, pull it from the inside out. Don't touch the outside surface, just touch the inside. And uh, you can use your hand or you can use a throwing stick. Um, this is, I'm going to put a little water on the inside to kind of lube it up a little bit so it's a little bit more slippery. Uh, so the tools glide, or my hands will glide easier on it. Um, take that out. Now, I use a throwing stick. I like a throwing stick. Uh, to me, it's, it's uh, a little easier. Uh, you don't have to. You can use your hand if you want. But I use what I want to use. So now I'm just kind of bellying it out. I'm not touching the outside. I'm just touching the inside. You see the cracks are starting to form. I'll take her up here. That's the first pass. And we're going to take her up another pass here. Okay, the uh, more passes you make, the better the cracks are. A little bit more. I mean, you could take this out to like a moon jar if you wanted to. Uh, I've taken these out to where there's been holes in the sides uh, where I've gone through, you know, going out too far. But I kind of like that in some cases. It looks kind of neat. Now, let's finish off that lip or the lip of the rim. All right. Uh, you can see it's still kind of wonky, but that's okay because I'm going to roll it over. I like rolling over my, uh, my rims. Because it makes it a little stronger, it makes it a little less less uh, chance of something smacking it or cracking it. You know what I mean? And no water or air gets trapped in that rim. So if you do it right, works out just fine. And we'll grab a chamois here, clean that up, work it out a little bit. There you go. All right. So now we'll clean up the bottom. And a little bit more. There you go. Now, sodium silicate is real sticky, real messy. Uh, you'll want to clean this stuff up off your tools as soon as possible. Don't let it dry on them. Um, it'll uh, it'll ruin some tools. But if you're if you're quick and you clean them up quick, you shouldn't have a problem. There's what the texture looks like around for you and you know the amount of cracks you get is how many times you want to stretch it out and how hot you get it how dry you get it on the outside surface
Now, once again, sodium silicate is tough on your tools. So clean them off right, you know, right after you're uh, done using this stuff. Before you throw the next pot, clean them off. Uh, it can ruin some tools. Bats, I'm not too worried about. I can sand those down. Um, but like any kind of wood tools or brushes, clean them off ASAP. Anything that gets into your clay, throw that clay away. And there you go. A sodium silicate base. And I'll show you a couple samples here. There's that, uh, that red part is the yellow iron oxide and there's actually no glaze in the bottom of this one so and then this one has clear glaze over top of it over top of the uh, sodium silicon that's uh, ancient jasper on top and there's another one I just kind of did them in lines and see what the stripes would do it's kind of cool but that's sodium silicate so um, as always Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And remember, don't forget to get muddy.